Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about why I think the 5.56 caliber and the AR-15 are gonna be dominant in the United States uh, for at least the next 100 years, okay? Um, and the reason why I'm doing this video is because uh, lately I hear the military has been looking at a 6.8 caliber, 6.8. Uh, initially, I heard that they were going to try and replace the M4s or 416s, whatever, whatever they're using now. But initially, I heard that they were going to try and replace those guns. Now, I heard, I've heard that, no, they're not looking to do that. They're looking to replace the saw. And then I heard, no, they're actually looking for something new to go in between the saw and the m4 whatever they're doing uh, i have no idea i'm not even sure they know what they're doing but i'm gonna just focus on i think that the 556 ar-15 is gonna be dominant in the united states and i think that the military is also going to come back to it so if they try something else they're gonna end up coming back to it we're going to go through uh the reasons why i think um the, the the common uh reason that people will bring up is that you know generally you win battles with more bullets than more powerful bullets okay um so as far as the 556 five, i mean yeah it will not penetrate modern body armor right you know uh, class four or class no class three plus all right i think that's what they use in class three plus but here's the thing even with the the modern plate armor right it just covers basically heart and lungs, all right? It covers a very small part of your body. It, it basically covers the vital area over here. Um, of course, if you get hit in the face, I mean, you're dead. But uh, as far as the body, it just covers this area over here. They really can't make it that much bigger, any bigger than that, because you won't be able to move, right? Um, and in most combat type of situations, I don't think anybody actually wants to rely on the body armor. I think most people would rather rely on some other piece of cover, right? Something that's, you know, metal, right? That's going to, that has a better chance of stopping the bullets rather than on the plate themselves. So since the body armor is not the primary protection, right? Using something else like cover or concealment is the primary protection that's why it, it, it you know the, the armor is not going to get bigger uh and it doesn't it definitely does not make sense to me to try and invest in bullets that might might penetrate that okay uh and that, and that, i don't even think the 6.8 necessarily will but i don't i don't think it that makes sense so, so here's the thing um given that the body armor is so small right um it, it i and i've covered it in other videos how you defeat body armor and basically I, I covered for example the zipper drill where you start at the hip area which is unarmored and you walk your shafts up hit the hip nobody can stand on a broken hip right then you hit the plate percussively right some of the shots might hit the belly which is not covered right and, and the, the lower belly here it can't be covered because people need to be able to squat down so this area here is not going to be covered so you start here you walk your shots up the shots that hit the plate uh, basically that's gonna that's gonna beat the guy up right so if the only shots you're getting are on the plate even if these shots here don't land if all you're hitting is plate nobody can ignore that nobody can say hey it's just hitting me on the plate i'm just gonna ignore that and just keep walking forward it's gonna change what people do okay um so zipper drill you start the hip walk your shots up all right and then you walk the shots up to the head uh and if you haven't hit the hip area if you hit the plate they're gonna start looking for cover as they turn to the side, now you might get other openings on the side. Um, so that's the reason why I think it doesn't make sense to invest in more powerful ammunition that might penetrate the body armor uh, because there's just so little of it, right? That, I think that, that's an important consideration. There's just so little of it. Why bother? Just if you put, you know, you've got a 30 round magazine, all right? Put enough bullets in that area Right? Even if you're aiming here, he's he's moving, you're moving a little bit. Chances are that some of the bullets are going to come off center anyway and hit other parts. And even if they hit an arm, right, you know, once somebody gets hit in the arm, they're not looking to press forward. They're looking to retreat. They're looking to get out of there, okay? Um, so, so wounding an enemy uh, is very effective in the sense that now you've taken their desire to fight away from them. 
they might still be fighting, but they're not fighting for the purpose of of defeating you. They're fighting of, for the purpose of of survival. They're fighting for the purpose of you know, let me fight my way out of here so I can go get to a medic. Okay, um, so so wounding somebody really changes the dynamic of the fight. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think they're going to stick. In the end, the military is going to stick with the five five six. Um, I mean, just you know, when I train women. Um, I'll put them on an AK-47. The recoil is just a little bit more than, than the 5.56. And immediately I can see a difference in just their ability to control the gun. You know, just, just in that slight increase, you know, I can see that there's a, they have a little bit more difficulty uh, with their follow-up shots, okay? So just when you go from a 5.56 to a 7.62 by 3.9, there's a significant difference there that I can see it. Uh, and, it and that applies with guys as well. Um, when I, here's the thing, we have developed Certain tactics, certain ways of doing things, right? Like take an AR, get on target, boom, 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 right? If you know, if you give me a more powerful caliber, and I do have more powerful calibers, uh, even though I might be able to do that, I I don't want to do that. In other words, I'm uh, I'm um, you know because the gun is going to move around a little bit more because it's going to recoil a little bit more. I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. Okay, so the techniques that we have developed today, right, uh, are basically centered around the 5.56 recoil and also the 9mm recoil in the pistol, okay? Um, and, uh, you, know, these, you know, these techniques are coming out of the holster, you know, coming out of the holster, getting on target, boom, 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 you know, that, you know, you, you know, basically we would have to go back to using different techniques, right? We'd have to reinvent different techniques or go back an earlier period where let's say we we're shooting a, a 45 ACPs or something so the techniques that have been developed today are centered around those two cartridges the 556 five, uh, and the nine millimeter so that's another reason why I think that, that the even the military is going to come back to the 556 five, uh, for civilians aside from the fact that it's easier for, for guys for people to shoot it it's easier for the wives to shoot it that's a big consideration right what's easiest for your wife to shoot um but the fact that there's just so many ar-15s out there now the um the thing to consider okay is that that let's look at the ak-47 versus the ak-74 okay um uh, with the ak-47 like i don't know there's some what like 50 million of them that have been produced around the world ak-74 came around um which has certain benefits but the AK-47 is still dominant simply because there's just so many of them out there, okay? Uh, so when we look at the AK-47 versus AK-74 and which one, even in the Russian armies, yeah, they got AK-74s, but like half the armies got like AK-47s, okay? Um, so even when you look at AK-47, AK-74, they're, they're still sticking to the gun that there's just more of. And right now in the United States, the main guns are AR-15s and 9mm handguns, lots of, particularly Glocks, okay? So I think that those are the two guns that are going to be around for like the next 100 years as dominant guns. Um, I think that the only time that you would actually see a change is if they change the chemistry. Not, not the lead, not the metal, right? right? Not the size of the bullet or the shape of the bullet, but if they change the chemicals, uh, that go inside it to provide the propellant, okay? Um, because the way it is right now, you put in a certain amount of gunpowder. There's only so much gunpowder that will fit in here. It will produce only so much energy. Uh, you can only tweak it so much by changing gunpowders. Um, if they come up with something different, right? Like something that would create the same amount of, of, of energy by burning, right? Through a chemical reaction um, as, let's say, the gunpowder that's in here. But with only the half the amount, then I could see this changing, right? Because if I can create a cartridge that is, let's say, half the half the size of this, but still takes the same bullet here, the same 5.56 bullet, and still moves it to the same velocity, creating the same energy, like, yeah, now that's something worth changing over to, okay? So it's not changing the metal components that will make the world or make uh, uh, the U.S. military or the civ American civ civilian population uh, moves to something different. Not the metal, it's, it's the chemicals 
that's what would make uh, everybody change. And we kind of saw this with uh, when we switched over from black powder to smokeless powder, right? Um, there was a big benefit to moving to smokeless powder. Um, you know, so, so yeah, everybody made that change, okay? Uh, so that's what, what I think would, would have to happen in order for uh, the United States civilians and military to move away from the 556. Five, now, um, what I want to do, put this to the side for a second, and I want to kind of demonstrate a couple of points of what I mean uh, as far as, or rather, just share my personal experience with, with fighting tactics, right? Because as you guys know, I do medieval combat. Okay, um, and I'm going to explain to you guys when I fight um, why I use this type of a sword instead of this type of a sword, right? So if you hold the two swords here together, you can see that this one over here, right, is obviously bigger. This one is shorter, lighter, okay? So this sword over here, because it's, first of all, the, the, this sword is not that much heavier than that sword. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit heavier, right? Uh, maybe a couple of ounces, but the main difference is that th the blade is wider up here, right? Whereas this one's a little bit wider in the back. So the, so the weight is distributed uh, differently. So because this blade is a little bit wider, I'm sorry, a little bit longer, all right? What this does is it allows me to make more popular blows, uh, more powerful blows. Because the blade is longer, the, I'm making a bigger arc, right? The tip makes a bigger arc. So because it's making a bigger arc, it's gonna achieve a higher velocity. My, my hand's moving at the same speed, but the tip is moving faster because it's, it's further out. But in order to move this sword, I have to use, generate more power from down here, right? So with this sword here, all my power comes from my lower body, right? And I rely on that, and if I'm gonna make I'm going to turn this sword over and see how I make these large rotational cuts, right? All right? You see how I'm making a large rotational cut because I need to. I need uh, more space to, energy, to, to generate that extra power, right? With this sword over here, okay, this sword over here, it's, it's shorter, um, the weight's further back. Uh, with this sword here, because it's... it's uh, not so tip heavy, I can keep this sword right in front of my face and just give it a little bit of a twist and I can make a cut, right? I can make a cut, right? And the other thing I can do is I can, instead of having to make a, a large rotational cut, instead of having to go from here all the way to here, see how I'm coming around my head, right? With this sword, I can, I can rotate the sword out here, right? I can rotate the sword out here because it's a lighter sword. I can't do it as quickly with, you know, I can't do it as easily with that other sword. Okay? So, I am a, uh, you know, I fight competitively with Sword and Shields. I've posted videos, you guys have seen that. So I can use either one of these swords, right? Um, now, in the fighting that we do, the blows are self-acknowledged. So basically, I gotta hit you hard enough, right, because we're wearing armor. I gotta hit you hard enough so that you acknowledge that the blow was a good blow, and you're gonna accept it as a hit, okay? Uh, if I don't hit you hard enough, um, you're not going to accept it, uh, and basically I got to keep fighting, okay? That's, that's the general idea with that, okay? Um, so you would think that, hey, let me take the harder hitting sword so I can hit as hard, harder and I can get that person to accept the blows. The problem here is because with the, with the bigger sword or the heavier or, the, or the, the sword that hits harder, I have to generate more power from here. Okay, I have to move more of my body. My opponent has a better chance um, of, of seeing what I'm about to do and countering it. And one of the counters might just be to step back a little bit, okay? Whereas with this sword here, right, because I'm not starting my blows from over here, I'm starting from here, and I can initiate a shot really fast. Um, and that's kind of the same as if, if we're fighting, right? If I'm gonna throw a punch, right? So I got my arms over here, right? If, I, if I'm here and, and I throw a punch straight here, right? Boom, you know, first of all, my hands are guarding my face, right? And from here, I can acknowledge. Now, if I bring my hand back over here, you know, if I cock back, yeah, I can throw a much more powerful shot. But what am I doing there? I'm giving up uh, two things. Number one, I'm bringing my hand back. Uh, I'm gonna get more power out of it, but I, but I also just created an opening that my opponent can punch through. 
So as I bring my hand back, all, if his hands are forward, all he has to do is just follow my hand back, hit the opening. Uh, maybe he's not going to hit me as hard, but I'm still going to feel it, okay? Um, so so it, do, it, it doesn't benefit me to bring my arm back to make a more powerful punch and leave myself, leave, you know, open up my defense. Makes more sense for me to fight here and, and, and launch my shots from here, okay? Um, and by the way, I used to teach boxing, so, uh, you know, um, that's how I know all these things. So, so it makes more sense for me to start from here, make less powerful shots, but maintain a tighter defense. And the other thing is from here, my shots are faster, right? See, see how they're faster? Because then they're traveling a shorter distance. So because it's traveling a shorter distance, it's, you know, there's less time for my opponent to know. Whereas if it comes back here, right, like well, you just sort of come back. What do you think it's going to do if it comes back? It's not going to go forward, right? So if, the, if it comes back and forward, it's traveling a longer distance. It's easier for my opponent to track it, okay? So that's why even though I can use either one of these swords when I fight, when I, fight um, I choose not to use the harder hitting sword. I prefer to use the lighter sword that, that hits lighter. Now, uh, you know, I said earlier that the blows are self-acknowledged. If I don't hit my opponent hard enough, they don't have to accept it, right? And that's fine. I got a light sword that I can move really quickly, right? So I can hit him multiple times. So that's how I win fights, right? So... Got my sword here, my hit. So I can basically throw multiple shots, right? I can throw multiple shots because I have a lighter sword that moves faster. And the fact is that when I throw my, my shots, I don't expect any one of them to be a killing shot. In fact, a lot of my shots, uh, the, the vast majority of my shots are distraction shots. So if I'm here, right, right, I throw a couple of shots here. Okay. The purpose of these shots here was to get his defense up there, right? Boom, boom. That's a distraction. So I can take that leg. Okay. So, so all those other shots, those multiple shots that I did, were just a distraction, so I could take that leg shot. And if I was doing it with this sword, this sword requires a lot more wind up. That's a lot of energy to throw, so I can get that leg shot. Okay. That's a lot of that's a lot of energy that I'm using up. Um, and here's the thing: when I, when I'm fighting, there's only there's only so much energy that I have stored up. I mean, the typical fight lasts for about 10 minutes, that, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing my sword practicing. Um, or rather, not that the fight, the, the, la the fight can, land, can last 30 seconds if you win. But usually when I'm practicing, I will go for about 10 minutes before I tire out and I'm like, okay, um, I need to take a break. Uh, and the reason why I take the break, uh, sometimes I can push through it, but I, I don't want my form to start breaking down. I don't want to start developing bad habits. So. At the point where I think that uh, I'm going to start, you know, that my form is going to start breaking down, I'm going to start using bad techniques, I stop fighting. And that, that's usually about 10 minutes in. So, um, in those, so I have, a, let's say, about 10 minutes of, of, of energy uh, to, 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 to use, and I want to use it conservatively. You know, I don't want to waste shots. Um, and also, if I use a sword like this, that's gonna that's gonna tire me out a lot faster. So it makes a lot more sense to use the lighter hitting sword that I can do I can make lots of hits with um, and doesn't tire me out. And I don't I'm not investing too much in any one shot because I don't expect any one shot to actually be the killing shot. Uh, all the, the vast majority of the shots, you know, like I'll usually throw four or five, six shots in order to land one shot after. And I think that. That is in line with, you know, from what I hear, the military uh, in, in combat uh, basically uses up about 50,000 rounds of ammunition in order to kill one person, okay? And it only takes one bullet to kill one person. So the other 49,999 rounds are to create an opportunity, all right, to get that one bullet where it needs to go, okay? Um, so, but, but you need those, you need a total of 50,000 rounds in order to, to do that, right? To get that, that one kill. Um, so that's why I think that, that, you know, again, I'm applying 
my experience with the sword fighting, the way I practically fight, where I choose to use a lighter sword where I can throw more shots rather than use a heavier, harder hitting sword where I'm going to throw less shots. I'd rather use the lighter sword and, and be able to throw more shots. So I think that that's the reason why the military is going to come back to the 5.56 five, because they have the ability to put lots of bullets down range, you know, uh, towards the bad guys to create opportunity. Because remember, a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of it's suppression fire. A lot of it is, let's say, to flush them out, right? Like put bullets on, a lot of bullets in this area to get them to move to another area. So a lot of the ammunition is used up that way. Pressure fire, uh, you know, to, to, to flush people, you know, or, or the enemy towards in another direction. Um, and that's the reason why I think that the military is going to stick with the 5.56. Five, and 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 I and well, not the reason why civilians are going to stick with the 5.56. Five, the main reason why I think civilians are going to stick with the 5.56 five, is firstly because we've got so many of the so much of the 5.56 five, five, two, two, stockpiled. Uh, because we own already own more, probably more than 30 million, probably closer to 50 million uh, AR-15 already. All right, so that, that's another important reason. Uh, but also the techniques that we have been developing, the things that I teach, are based on the 5.56 five, caliber and the 9 millimeter in the pistol. Um, so if you if you come at me and you say, hey, we're no longer using 5.56, five, we're not using 308s, right? So I got here you go. I got a 308 here, right? Much bigger than this. This definitely has an advantage um, in that 500 to 800 yard range, okay? Problem is, look at the woods over here. I, I, I can't even see past 100 yards. In fact, I have to, I had to cut a line just so I can get to 200, 250 yards here, okay? So, so part of the country where I'm in, you can't see past 100 to 200 yards, okay? So that, so. Right, right away, the, the 308 is not that useful to me um, in that sense, okay? Because uh, I, I don't get to shoot long distances. I have to travel quite, quite a distance to get to a, a range where I can shoot six, 700 yards. Um, so here's the thing, uh, what I was going to say. If you were to say, hey, we're all, from now on, we're all going to be shooting 308s. Um, the techniques that I have learned that I have been developing with the AR-15 are probably not going to work so well with the 308. I can't have somebody with three way going blah, 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 blah. Like, no, it's going to be more like bop, bop, bop. It won't work. Same thing with the 9mm. The pistol technique that I use with the 9mm, right? You put somebody on the, on the 40 cal, and I own 40 cals. I've, I've tried to do them on the 40 cal. Yes, I can do them. I'm not as accurate. Uh, I have to fight harder to get back on target. Um, so I can't use those techniques, right? I can't use the 9mm techniques as well with a 40 cal. 45 uh, definitely not a 10 millimeter um so that's one of the things that that that's in the back of my mind right because remember these are this is a fighting gun okay this is a fighting rifle uh the purpose of this is to fight okay um so what it ultimately comes down to is what's going to make me fight better all right is having more ammunition is going to is having bigger ammunition going to make me fight better or is having um, you know, uh, less powerful ammunition, um, but I can move around more quickly with, put more rounds on target. Is that going to make me fight better? Uh, now, I have not been in a situation, and I'm very happily, I've not been in a situation where I'm actually fighting with, with guns, uh, but I regularly fight with the swords. And I can tell you from my practical experience, right, and I fight competitively to win, right, I have a choice of this or I have a choice of this. Harder hitting, lighter and faster. I go with lighter and faster um, to win, right? Lighter and faster is what uh, wins fights for me. So that's my experience, right? Um, and, and that's and that's probably the most valuable thing that I can offer because, you know, I, I have not been in a situation where I'm actually fighting with this, so I, I can't say definitively anything with that. Anything I say is basically secondhand information. But with this, I can give you guys first-hand information because I regularly fight with this kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop some comments below. Drop, you know, if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine, man. Uh, you know, I uh, I value everybody's opinions. Please let me know in the comment section what you think and why. Uh, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Um, make sure you guys are following me on Odyssey, which is an uncensored uh, platform. Uh, my channel name over there is Pocono Tactical, 
and Odyssey is spelled O D Y S E E dot com. Right, that's where you, where you'll find me find that uncensored channel, where I know that that will be around for a very long time. Whereas over here on YouTube, I don't know how long this channel will be here. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.